2022 is going to shape up to be a great year for PC hardware, both in the CPU and GPU markets. Intel is planning on bringing their new 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs. Meanwhile, AMD will be fighting on two fronts with their Zen 4, Ryzen 7000 CPUs, and RDNA 3 GPUs. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. 2021 may not have been a very exciting year for PC hardware. While we did have new products released from companies like AMD, Intel, and Nvidia, a lot of them were just variants of existing parts released in 2020 and there weren't many new series or architectures brought to the market. RTX 3070 Ti, RX 6600, Ryzen 5 5600G, and plenty of other parts were parts that were based on already released architectures from the previous year and they were mainly just cut down parts or they had tweaked memory or had in the inclusion of integrated graphics like in the case of an APU. The most exciting series of parts that were released last year were from Intel, those being their 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs because it was a totally brand new architecture and incorporated some really cool new tech that was never seen before on the desktop, that being their big little core design. However, 2022 is going to be different because we will be seeing a new series of CPUs released from both AMD and Intel that will be based on new microarchitectures, utilizing a new manufacturing process, and bringing new tech not featured on older generations. Focusing on the former, we know that AMD will be releasing their Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 series later this year, and before that, they will also be releasing the 5800X 3D. Now, I've done a whole discussion on the 5800X 3D, which consisted of topics like who would buy it and whether it would be worth it in a different video, so if you're interested in that, link for it will be in the video description. For this video, I wanted to focus on Zen 4 because this is what the vast majority of gamers and hardware enthusiasts will be looking forward to. At CES, AMD did show off a sneak peek of Zen 4 in action, and Lisa Su did mention some details in regards to the new platform. Zen 4, which the Ryzen 7000 family of CPUs will be based on, is targeted for a release sometime in the second half of this year, and I wanted to discuss that release date since we have some new info in regards to it. Ryzen 7000 will be launched alongside a new AM5 platform, which will have support for things like DDR5 and PCIe 5.0, which Intel has already been offering with Alder Lake, so AMD is playing a bit of catch up here. Although these are features that aren't necessarily in huge demand right now unless you're doing tasks which can benefit from the higher bandwidth or use a lot of PCIe lanes. We saw from numerous benchmarks conducted from various hardware reviewers that showed when it comes to gaming there's not a huge difference between DDR4 and DDR5, but what would make a huge difference is the hole in your wallet. PCIe 5.0 is beneficial for people who will be using those new SSDs coming out, but we'll see just how beneficial it would be for the new RDNA 3 or NVIDIA RTX 4000 GPUs. I suspect that, just like how it was with Intel, where they worked out a deal with motherboard manufacturers, we will see some really high-end AM5 motherboards which will have all the bells and whistles, and then we'll also see some cost-effective options utilizing old tech like DDR4, which would be great to have in that transitionary period. DDR4 will still be the best bang for the buck option for the vast majority of users. They also showed a demo of a Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 CPU in action at CES 2022, but it was so vague, there wasn't really anything useful you could extract from it, as there was no FPS counter or any stats for that matter. There weren't also any specs of the CPU mentioned, except Lisa Su did mention that it was running at 5 GHz on all cores. Now, for all we know, this could have been a dual core or a quad core, which wouldn't have been that difficult to run at 5 GHz. However, I do strongly believe that this CPU that they used was probably an 8 core CPU and that across all the SKUs for the 7000 series, they should have relatively faster clocks when compared to the 5000 series. One of the reasons why I believe this is because parts like the 5800X and 5900X can already boost several cores at high figures during a multi-threaded workload. I mean, I've posted several tests on my channel with the 5800X, and you can see that it can run all of its 8 cores at 4.7 to 4.8 GHz during a gaming session. So I don't think it's far-fetched to think that using a new performance node 
and new architecture that will be seeing a significant clock speed boost. It's important to remember that it might feel good to see a CPU run at 5GHz all core, but IPC and lower latency are where the bigger performance jumps are coming from these days. One thing I'm not sure about, because I've seen conflicting info on it, is that Zen 4 might not be utilizing 3D vCache, which seems a bit bizarre to me. I can understand if it was only being used for their epic server CPUs, but we are in fact getting a gaming focused CPU using the tech, that being the 5800X3D, just a few months before the 7000 series comes out. So it'd be a bit odd to have a feature mitigated from it where, you know, the previous generation was using. But speaking of release dates, there hasn't been anything concrete suggested from AMD as to when they'll be releasing the 7000 series. I originally thought that it would have been in the fall, but apparently it may be much sooner than that. Graymon55, who is a pretty well-known hardware leaker on Twitter, posted that Zen 4 won't be coming out in Q4 anymore, like how it was planned in the early days of Zen 4's development cycle, but rather we should expect an earlier release date. I think what will happen is that we'll see AMD announce the series at Computex which will be held in May of this year, and we should probably see the series be released sometime in July of this year. This would make for an ideal release window as still have a new series of CPUs which should crush Intel's Alder Lake, though the goal should be for Zen 4 to compete with Intel's upcoming Raptor Lake series which is also shaping up to be a large leap over the previous generation. I'm honestly getting really excited because the CPU market finally got competitive late last year and it looks like it's going to become even more heated which is exactly what you want as a consumer. The other thing I wanted to point out though is that it will significantly dwarf the importance of the 58 x 3D since most people would rather just wait for Zen 4 unless you're trying to just stay on AM4 and want an upgrade from an older gen CPU, which is also a viable and totally fine option. Going back to the topic on hand, I think AMD may have intentionally switched to an earlier release window just to be first to the market with a new revolutionary series of processors. As the way things are right now with the CPU market, they're actually losing on many fronts. They don't have budget CPUs to compete with, they lost the gaming crown, they're not the leaders in terms of platform features, and depending on the segment or the application, they lose in multi-core performance as well. Zen 4 should put them right back on top or at the very least on par with Intel in some of those areas where they fell behind, so Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 is going to be very exciting. Now speaking of Intel Raptor Lake, which their 13th gen CPUs will be based on, these CPUs are also expected to be released later this year. We don't have a whole lot of information based on how much the IPC gains will be, clock speed increases, cache increases, etc. However, we do know that there is going to be a bump in core count, which by itself will indicate a large performance leap across all segments of their lineup. Back in September last year, Tom's Hardware, who were sourcing Comanche on Twitter, who's also a very well-known hardware leaker, said they spotted an Intel CPU with 24 cores and 32 threads in the Babco benchmark, implying that this would be the upcoming 13900K, which will come equipped with 8 performance cores and 16 smaller efficiency cores. Then just recently, WCCF Tech posted an article which had results from the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark of an unreleased Intel CPU with the same core and thread count. I don't really care about the numbers right now because it's just an engineering sample we don't know the full details of the config or you know what the final numbers will be it's obviously going to be better but we don't know for sure just how much we still got to wait for other info like you know ipc increases differences in cash etc you'd be better off waiting closer to release to make comp comparisons of benchmark results the key thing here is that the increase in core count is what has me most excited. This would mean that we should see a bump in core count even for the lower end SKUs like the i5s and i7s. So if the 13900K has 8 cores and 16 efficiency cores totaling up to 32 th threads, then the i7-13700K should match the same config as last year's 12900K which has 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores for 24 threads. And then that would mean that the i5s would have 6 if performance cores with 8 efficiency cores. Like overall, there should be huge performance uplifts in multi-threading performance across the lineup when compared to the previous generation. This is really exciting to see because prior to Alder Lake, Intel's multi-core performance was severely lacking when compared to AMD. However, now it seems like they'll be making another leap which could allow them to maintain that multi-core performance crown, which is, you know, <laughs> which used to be AMD's bread and butter. It's kind of comical to see how the tables have turned in this area. From what I've heard, it seems like Zen 4 will top out at 16 cores, which means Intel will have the core count advantage here, and 
even if they're smaller E cores, it should still give them a step up in regards to that multi core performance lead. What AMD needs to do is revamp their entire lineup. Ryzen 3s should start at 6 cores, Ryzen 5s should be 8 cores, Ryzen 7s should have 12 cores, and Ryzen 9s should be 16 cores. This way they can be on parity when it comes to multi core performance when compared to Intel. As the way things are right now, the 12600K smashes the 5600X and even wins against the 5800X in some cases. If AMD decides to keep the same structure, then a 14 core i5 would easily beat a 6 core Ryzen 5 7600X. The gap in number of cores would be too great to be overcome by IPC or cache increases. So unless AMD wants to lose their performance advantage in this market, I think that they need to be more forward thinking with their approach and not act like how Intel did when they were dominating. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on what kind of approach they'll be taking here. As consumers though, this is really the best scenario we can have for the market, where both companies are innovating, releasing new products that are a significant upgrade from the previous gen, and playing this leapfrog game with each other. It doesn't matter if you're interested in buying a $150 CPU or a $500 CPU. Everyone wins as there will be plenty of great options to choose from. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.